Hello friends, welcome to Inside Saigon Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about weekly current affairs, week number 27. In case if you miss out previous weekly current affairs issues, you can find in the playlist named as weekly issues. Okay, in the playlist you can find. By the way, in today's video, we are going to discuss about following seven topics. First, we will start with the Brahmos. By the way, before each topic, I will give a brief idea about that particular topic, then we will go through the notes. And after watching this video, you can find PDF document related to this video in the description of this particular video. Okay, first we will check Brahmos. You know, this particular topic is related to science and technology. Science and technology. Now, what we are going to discuss about Brahmos, let us see. Actually, Brahmos is a cruise missile. You know that missiles, there are two types. One is a cruise missile, the other one is a ballistic missile. So, now this is the cruise missile. Actually, BrahMos missile is jointly developed by India and Russia. And now, we are exporting this technolo technology to Philippines. That is the reason it is in news. And so, what areas you have to concentrate here? The range of this missile and the technology of this missile, you have to concentrate. Okay. Now, let us see. India is about to export the ground system related to BrahMos supersonic cruise missile to which country Philippines. Here the catch is it is cruise missile and supersonic. If you come across the word supersonic it means higher than the sound velocity and the cruise missile is the one which go through it within the atmosphere whereas the ballistic missiles it go out of the atmosphere and it will come back. Generally the hyperbolic path is related to the you know like ballistic missile whereas the cruise missile they do not associate with that kind of hyperbolic path. And the cruise missile speciality is we can deploy fight and forget, fight and forget mechanism in this cruise missile. Okay? So, once you uh, fight, okay, fight towards a target, we do not need to worry about the target will be hit by the missile. And this is the one it can be launched from any surface. It can be from land or sea or air. So, multiple applications. It is jointly developed by BrahMos Aerospace and joint venture of India and Russia. You know that India and Russia we have joint defense collaborations a lot. Okay. Best example this uh, you know like uh, I mean not joint collaboration but defense ties related to S-400, MiG fighter jets and so on and so forth. It is named after the Brahmaputra river India and Moscow river Russia. It is a two stage missile. In the first stage it will use solid propellant and in the second stage it will use the liquid ramjet. It is a you know like supersonic like we mentioned. So, it is the speed of this cruise missile is Mach 2.8 that means higher than the sound. The minimum range range of this missile is 400 to 500 kilometers and it works, it works on the principle of fire and forgets. So, this is the topic number one. Now, the second topic it is going to be okay you will see here uh, you know like armed personnel and defense and all these things. So, this topic is related to the operation Sarva Shakti. So, operation Sarva Shakti, this operation is related to what? This operation is related to counter terrorism. And where is this happening? It is happening at the Pirpanjal mountain range on either side of the Pirpanjal mountain range. So, first you have to understand the topography of this mountain range. This mountain range slopes are very steep and they are dense forest as well. So, these are the perfect breeding grounds for terrorist activities. In the recent days, in the recent days, there are certain terrorist attacks happened on our Indian troops. So, to eradicate terrorists from this area, we conducted this operation Sarva Shakti. And previously in this area, we conducted exercise such as operation Sarpa Vinash as well. Now, let us see further details. By the way, tell me students, who is the head of the army? Okay, who is leading Indian army now? And who acts as the chairman of the Defense Acquisition Council? Okay, try to answer in the comment section. Indian Army launched Operation Sarva Shakti, where Jammu and Kashmir, which location on either side of the Pripanjal range. And what is the importance of this? It has strategic importance. Mainly, it concentrated on the south of the Pripanjal range to counter to, to counter ongoing security challenges related to terrorist attacks. Challenges related to this operation and this area is this area is having dense forest, steep mountain slopes. So, that is the reason it is continuously advantageous to terrorists. Next, 
Operation Seppa Vinash. For better understanding of this, you have to know India had a Kargil war with Pakistan in 1999. After that, Operation <coughs> sorry, Operation Parakram. Operation Parakram, it was in 2002. It involves heavy mobilization of armies on either side of the border. Of course, after that, uh, tension has been de-escalated. After 2002, in 2003, Operation Sarva Vinash, Sarpa Vinash, it was conducted mainly, mainly to purge terrorists from the areas and that you know like from the areas of border next third one we are going to discuss it is related to climate okay here you will see the contrasting pictures here with the snow and this is without snow i mean these pictures are related to the same location now for the first time kashmir recorded very less amount of the snow in fact it was a dry winter of course these kind of things are mainly related to it may be due to the long term uh, causes such as climate uh, related issues and it may be due to short term things as well like uh, la nina for el nino and uh, i mean west i mean disturbances in the western lakes and all these reasons and the consequences of course this kind of dry winters it has a long term as well as short term consequences short term consequences such as on tourism and uh, some other aspects such as you know like uh, uh, drinking water uh, whereas the uh, long term consequences means hydroelectricity projects will be impacted they are the long term effects let's see kashmir and himachal pradesh both himachal pradesh and kashmir this winter they subjected to very extremely dry the reasons are climate and weather patterns decline in the western disturbances and the role of climate change and el nino you know that el nino always leads dry winter as well as dry monsoon season as well okay contrast to la nina okay and this el nino and la nina they are related to uh, water changes i mean uh, water changes i mean temperature changes in pacific waters implications of no snowfall in kashmir short term effect short term impact is about drought especially related to agriculture forest fires obviously because the dry uh, environment and the dry conditions are ideal are, are you know like more vulnerable for forest fires L drop in crop production long term consequences reduction in the hydroelectricity generation and increase in the glacier melting of course because of the glacier melting what we can observe even we can observe glacial lake outburst as well recently in sikkim it was happened glacial lake outburst even that resulted to uh, missing of some armed personnel as well who are having the base camp in the low lying areas and impact on terrorism as well it, it, it impacts on terrorism too that means that uh, border infiltration it can be more due to less extreme conditions so now topic number four it is related to fcra and this topic is more related to governance and economy first you have to understand what is this fcra stands for you know fcra stands for foreign contribution regulation act okay fine it is related to whom it is related to ngos okay so ngo stands for non governmental organizations you know when ngos obviously they can get funds from within india as well as from outside as well so the foreign funds to regulate foreign funds this fcra act was enacted why you have to regulate we have to regulate because this foreign funding sometimes it may affect nation's security and sovereignty as well so to prevent that during the time of emergency indira gandhi government enacted this act it was in 1976 later this act was replaced in 2010 and to that new act amendments were also made in 2020 according to the amendments if any ngo is receiving foreign funds that ngo so it can spend those funds okay only majorly majorly for whichever the activities it received for okay that money should not be used for administrative expenses i mean expenses only 20 percentage of the money can be spent for administrative expenses and the money cannot be transferred to other ngo as well and of course the ngo which is uh, receiving foreign funds they should re they should renew their registration for every 5 years according to fcra and according to the recent amendments if any ngo is violating these norms the offenses are uh, the the, pun the punishment is also increased now we will see so what's the context the context is recently according to fcra act the registration of one of the very prominent ngo that is center for policy research the registration revoked so what is the fcra fcra is the one which regulates what it regulates it regulates acceptance 
and utilization of the foreign contributions. So, for the best interest of the security and sovereignty of the country. It was first enacted in 1976. This was replaced in 2010 Act. The 2010 Act was amended in 2020. The provisions of this Act. Every NGO which would like to receive foreign funds, they must register under this Act. And these groups, they can receive the money for the purposes such as social service, educational service, religious, economic and cultural programs. So, tell me students, which Act during the British's time allowed Christian missionaries uh, to enter into India? Which Act allowed Christian missionaries to enter into India? Next, they should utilize funds only for the purpose for which they received. And they have to register, they have to register, they have to renew their registration for every five years and they have to submit the annual, uh, the financial accounts as well, IT accounts. And this foreign funding is prohibited to certain activities such as candidates for elections, journalists, newspapers, media broadcast, MPs, okay. These are the certain group of people, they were not allowed to receive foreign funds, okay, in the best interest of the country. According to 2020 amendments, the amount of foreign funds out of that only 20 percentage of the funds can be used for the administrative exp expenses. Previously, it was 50 percentage. Then the violations, punishment for violation also increased from 7 years to 12 years, punishment enhanced. Valid registration validity for 5 years only. FCRA implemented by Ministry of Home Affairs, which is responsible for the country's internal security. Next topic, World Economic Forum. So, you know, first we have to understand what is this World Economic Forum. It is a forum where countries uh, discuss issues related to pressing needs of economy and social issues. Okay? This year World Economic Summit generally also, uh, it was held at Davos. Davos present in Switzerland. And the speciality about this, this year's summit is along with WEF, India, they launched one global good alliance which is related to gender equality and equity. That is one of the initiative which is very, very important to this World Economic Forum. Along with this, as an aspirant, you have to know what are the prominent publications published by World Economic Forum, which publications generally are published by World Economic Forum. Let us see. So, the 54th annual meeting of World Economic Forum, it was held in Davos, Switzerland. This is an intergovernmental organization, it was founded in 1971. And this annual meeting in Davos, it is mainly to discuss and collaborate on pressing economic as well as the social issues. These are the prominent publish publications by WEF. Fostering energy, fostering effective energy transition, global competitiveness report, global gender gap report, this is very, very important and a global, I mean, future of jobs report. These are the prominent publications. 2024 report. I mean, this year meeting, actually this year meeting is having some significance too. Okay. And that is about, this is the first offline meeting after three years. After COVID pandemic, we are having the first offline meeting. Key issues discussed are artificial intelligence, war and uncertainty and climate. We know that sometimes artificial intelligence is getting misused as well. Tell me students, recently there was a global summit on artificial intelligence was held in which country? Which country hosted that event? Next, India. In this summit, India along with the World Economic Forum, we launched an initiative known as Global Good Alliance for Gender Equity and Equality. The main purpose of this initiative is to bring together global best practices and knowledge related to, related to women's health, education and enterprise. So, this is about the World Economic Forum. Next topic is, so this is about one of the initiative from Union Government that is Pradhan Mantri Suryoda Yojana. Actually, this Pradhan Mantri Surya Yojana is about encouraging having solar rooftops in around 1 crore households. So, here the target is important, 1 crore. Solar rooftops, very, very important. Actually, regarding the solar energy, solar energy, especially regarding the rooftop solar energy, our target for 2026 is about 40 gigawatts. At the moment, we are generating only around 11 gigawatts. And by 2030, we would like to generate energy through renewable sources around 500 gigawatts. And out of the entire energy, we would like to generate around 40 percentage of the energy from the non-fossil fuel energy. So, these are the targets you have to remember. Apart from that, 
India at the international level, we also launched International Solar Alliance along with the France at COP21 Paris Climate Agreement. Apart from that, India is also a member of initiative related to One World, One Sun, One World and One Grid. Regarding that also India is taking actively. Apart from that, India launched various initiatives related to solar energy such as solar rooftop, solar parks which are generally related to generation of 500 megawatts in each and every solar park and Prime Minister Kusum related to solar pump sets to farmers and PM Ajay that is about uh, you know like uh, this renewable energy to solar I mean street lamps okay Atal Jyoti Yojana Atal Jyoti Yojana PM Ajay related to solar street lamps and apart from that India's one of the policy that is a national action plan on climate change in that mission solar energy is also one of the mission so in this way we are putting much efforts in encouraging solar energy production of course the solar rooftop also it reduces the electricity bills in the poor people and it also enhances the India's self-reliance in energy and the features we already discussed and which ministry is regulating ministry of new and renewable energy and India would like to reduce its carbon intensity around 33 to 35 percentage by 2030 and clean and affordable energy related to sustainable development goal number seven our next topic is related to Uganda okay why we are discussing Uganda today first you have to understand Uganda present in African continent and equator goes through Uganda and very prominent river which flows in Uganda that is river Kango the speciality of river Kango is river Kango is a river which crosses which crosses two times the equator and of course Uganda is sharing substantially Lake Victoria as well majorly Lake Victoria is distributed between the Uganda and uh, so Tanzania okay so we are discussing Uganda because recently norm non alignment moment related meeting norm meeting was held in Uganda so tell me students what are the founding members of NAM? Okay, of course, India is one of the founding members. Apart from India, there are four other countries which are the founding members. What are they? Now, the NAM meeting was held, and you know that NAM meeting it has its origin related to Baghdad conference. Baghdad conference, which uh, uh, gradually it resulted to NAM. NAM stands for non alignment movement. So, it is about uh, it, it was very significant during the Cold War time. During the Cold War, the world was bipolar mainly so one is towards the russia which is mainly socialist ideology and the other one towards the usa towards capitalist ideology and norm is about not joining with any of these two major power blocks maintaining a neutral stance like uh, buddhism's great middle path and aristotle great mean uh, mean value so so this is about sir golden mean value okay so the ninth 19th non alignment movement summit it was held in uganda city capital city kampala the theme of this is deepening cooperation for shared global affluence. Now, it was established in 1961. It was a continuation of Baghdad Conference, which was held in Indonesia in 1955. Currently, NAM membership it stood at 120 countries. It is the second largest grouping of nations. It is not having any permanent secretariat. Generally, NAM meetings it will be organized for every three years. Uganda. It is a landlocked country in East Africa just now we have seen and it is sharing substantial portion of Lake Victoria and it also consisted of snow capped Rinjori mountains snow capped Rinjori mountains regarding the Lake Victoria it is very uh, important to discuss this issue Lake Victoria restoration actually Lake Victoria faced with much environment challenge and this Lake Victoria was you know like uh, it requires a lot of uh, restoration efforts it is the second largest, I mean, in the world, first largest in Africa. It mainly shared among Kenya, very minorly, but majority of this Lake Victoria shared between the Uganda and Tanzania. So this is about the seven issues of today's video. Now let's see, it's the time to check the MCQs. I studied this video MCQ. With reference to NATO, consider the following statement. Read the two statement. NATO is a military alliance established by Washington Treaty. Okay. NATO has never invoked, I, so never invoked, no, it already invoked. So this statement is wrong. Now let's see today's MCQs. Okay, today's MCQs. First question number one. Consider the following statement regarding the Lake Redba. Okay, it is located in Egypt. It is known as Pink Lake due to the proliferation of halophilic green algae. 
pick the right one next next question amphiba amphiba effect recently seen in news refers to it is refer to what okay next question philo boats recently seen in the news related to what so these are the three mcqs related to today's video as we reach to the end of this video in today's current affairs related to so weekly current affairs issues we discussed about following seven issues and this is the detailed analysis regarding these seven issues i hope this video added some quality into your preparation and have a great day thanks for watching this video jai hind